Pacquiao and Brandon Rios will be meeting live on pay-per-view in Macau, China. There's been quite a long build-up for the fight, and Brandon Rios is still in Oxnard, California, where he's been preparing to go take on Pacquiao, but that comes after a long publicity tour during which Rios and Pacquiao were together. Brandon, good to see you again. Good to talk to you. Now, did you watch the latter stages of the fight between Donaire and Darchinian uh, as we were preparing to do this interview, or did you not get a chance to see it? Oh, yes, I was watching it actually right now when we, before I did the interview, but yes. So I uh, wondered if you could sense, to look good still. If you could sense the impatience of your trainer, Robert Garcia, as Robert was trying to get Nonito to throw more punches and be a little bit more like Brandon Rios in there. <laughs> well, you know, everybody got their style, but Nonito needed to be more aggressive, I believe. So Robert was trying to pump up to throw more punches, but other than that, uh, he did great. I think he, done, he looked good. And he looked like Donito that was doing good at, at the lower weight class. Now he's moved up, so he'll be better. So many boxing experts, writers, broadcasters, etc., are suggesting in advance of your fight with Manny Pacquiao that your style, straightforward, throwing a lot of punches, not a lot of uh, deception, let's call it, is made to order for what Pacquiao wants to do. On the other hand, my feeling is that if Manny doesn't have a lot left, you're exactly the wrong kind of opponent, and you'll run over him like a bull. What's your feeling about the style matchup between you and Manny? Well, uh, I feel great. You know, I always look good. I, do, I, I think I'm at my best. And when I fight somebody in front of me, it always brings the best out of, it always brings the best out of me. Look what happened to Anthony Owen when he fought right in front of me. I finished in three rounds. He was right there to get hit. And I think I'm the best insider fighter right now as of today. And I feel great. I'm ready. Uh, I can't wait to go to China, actually. I just, I already wanted to fight already. Uh, it's been a long camp. And it's just, I'm just anxious to get in the ring and throw some bombs. Well, you've already been to China. Now, you've had a lot of big fights, but none of them were pay-per-view. And this is the first time that you've been in a situation where you went on what amounted to a lengthy publicity tour, shoulder to shoulder with the guy that you're about to fight. And when we look at the video of you and Manny Pacquiao together, we don't see a lot of animosity. It looks like a couple of buddies taking a vacation together. How are you going to get it back up to be angry and mean-spirited against a guy whom clearly it appears that you like in Manny Pacquiao? Well, you know, uh... It's part of, it was part of the press tour, you know. We, we really didn't talk because I knew I didn't want to get too close to him and be more friendly with him because I knew I still got to fight this guy and we're going to compete with each other because I know he wants to knock my head off like I want to knock his head off. So, you know, I just kept it cool and, you know, whatever. But I'm ready to fight. Once, once it's time to fight, it's time to fight. I'm fighting this guy, so uh, friendship's out the window. Whatever we had at the press tour, all the stuff like that talking, being friendly, that's out the window already. Now I already switched my game face on, I already put my mold into fight mode, and I'm ready. I'm ready to go out there and retire Manny Pacquiao. That's when I'm ready, and that's in my mind, and I'm just showing the world that I'm gonna be the next superstar coming up, and I'm gonna show that never doubt me. So when you doubt me, always come prepared. All right, your stable mate Nonito Garcia made, uh, or Nonito Nenera, I should say, made no secret of the fact that there was a mental passage for him involved in coming back from the loss to Rigondeaux, and he didn't look all that sure of himself in the ring tonight. You're coming off of a loss to Mike Alvarado. How disappointing was that? How long did it take you to get over it? Has it affected your preparation in any way this time around? Well, you know, it was disappointing. You know, I was disappointed, but... You know, it took me like a week, a week, a week and a half to get over it. But I got over it quicker, I think, because right when Cameron called me, my manager, Cameron Duncan, called me and told me I'm going to fight Manny Pacquiao, my, I forgot about the loss. Uh, to me, I won. So I forgot about the loss, and I was just ready to fight now. I'm ready to go out there and give the world and show the world what I can do when I fight the best. It brings the best out of me. So uh, mentally, that's not going to affect me. I think I'm going to be... Uh, mentally 100% prepared and physically. So I'm not worrying about the loss. I'm ready to go and uh, get Manny Pacquiao his, uh, his retirement loss. Well, I tell everybody we're going to see a great fight November 23, and the reason I say that is because you're in it, Brandon. You know how I feel about your entertainment value, and yeah. it's important to the sport. So best of luck in your continued preparation, and we'll see you in Macau. Thank you very much, and see you guys in Macau. I want to say thank HBO for giving me the opportunity for 24-7 and fighting on the, one of the biggest cards and fighting one of the, the biggest name in the boxing and pay-per-view and everybody. Thank you guys, and 
I'm going to put on a great show for you guys, and I'm always ready. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks very much, Brandon Rios. Once again, it's Saturday, November 23, live on HBO Pay-Per-View. The fight actually takes place in Macau Sunday morning so that you can see it at the normal time for American showings of pay-per-view boxing late Saturday night. And immediately following this show, the debut of Manny Pacquiao, Brandon Rios, 24-7, in anticipation of that fight. All right. So uh, we're getting ready for the main event, but before we do, let's turn to Max Kellerman and look back one more time. Nonito Donaire was behind on the scorecards, had to rescue himself with that knockout. I didn't think he looked all that good through much of the fight. What's your take on the ultimate outcome? Well, he's still a fighter. I mean, that was the question Darchinian was going to find out. He is still a fighter, but he's not the same fighter. Here's a comparison you don't often hear with Donaire. Mike Tyson. Tyson had such hand speed and punching power, most heavyweights who faced him before he'd ever lost were beaten before they gotten into the ring. Donaire has just gone on a tear through the lighter weight classes that included guys like Nishioka who hadn't lost in a million years, proud fighters who were scared to throw a punch for eight or nine rounds, and as soon as he threw a punch, Donaire knocked him out. Narvaez, never lost in his career, never really threw a punch the whole fight, and just, just lost every round and lost on points. Donaire was a guy who rarely lost rounds against some of the best lighter division fighters in the world before he knocked them out because they were scared. I don't know if fighters are going to be scared anymore. The aura of invincibility is gone. Donaire is going to have to box and earn his wins now. All right. Talk about a guy who's been on a tear. Mikey Garcia has 27 knockouts in 32 consecutive wins, but he couldn't make weight in his last fight to defend his world championship at 126 pounds. So now Roy Jones, he moves up to 130. And because he's Mikey Garcia, he gets the privilege of fighting for a world championship in his first trip to the weight level, whereas Rocky Martinez had to labor long and hard and get himself into the right position to earn that title. So is this in some way an insult to Martinez that he can use to motivate himself in the fight? Uh, no, it's not an insult to Martinez at all. The reason being is because Rocky uh, Martinez has been champion. He earned his way to get to that title belt. He didn't really come off of a, a super thrilling background like Mark Mikey Garcia did. Mikey Garcia comes from a fighting family. He's a guy who came out, nobody even expected him to be what he turned out to be. Now, for Martinez, it's a great opportunity because now he gets an opportunity to perform in a Mexican versus Puerto Rican battle and fighting one of the best Mexican fighters at the weight class. Big payday for him, big stage for him. He got to take that as a blessing. Mexican-American. Born in the United States, raised in the United States, but all Mexican heritage, and we totally get that part of it. I'm sure Rocky Martinez sees it as a Puerto Rico versus Mexican fight. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape now for Rocky Martinez of Puerto Rico against Mikey Garcia of Oxnard, California. And you see the five-year age advantage for Garcia. A one-inch height advantage for Martinez. Most places, Garcia is listed at 5'6". When we measured him here, he measured out at five feet seven. Arm length advantage of a half inch measured from the armpit to the end of the fifth for Mikey Garcia. They both weighed in under the 130 pound limit. In fact, Garcia was under 129 at 128 and three quarters. And tonight, Garcia's rehydrated all the way up to 142, whereas Martinez unofficially three pounds lighter at 139. Max Kellerman, let's take a look at the divisional picture for the 130-pound weight class. Well, you have Rocky Martinez, the all-action fighter, against the guy already considered the class of the division in Mikey Garcia. But Uchiyama is actually the class of the division right now, the veteran fighter who uh, has beaten top fighters and looked good doing it. Mendez, Muria, Mura, sorry, the Japanese fighter who got revenge on Salgado, the guy who knocked out Linares and Juan Carlos Burgos, who many felt beat Rocky Martinez when they fought. And there's a look at Mikey Garcia. He was criticized for losing his title on the scale in June. You knew the sacrifices he made attempting to lose those final couple of pounds after falling ill following the weigh-in. Garcia knew changes had to be made. People don't know how hard you, you work to try to make weight. People don't see you, and, and, and they're not with you all the weeks leading up to the fight, and especially the last few days, you know, to make the weight. So they don't know what they're talking about. I mean, it's easy for someone just to say, ah, oh, he couldn't lose two pounds or whatever. Yeah, it's easy for them to say, but shit, if they see what I was going through, I mean, they probably would not even attempt, 
you know, to, to do what I was doing. Mike Garcia! 128 and three quarter pounds. I never had a structured diet for me. Alex Ariza, he's uh, in charge of doing my, my diet and strength and conditioning. The diet was a little different at first. I've never had anything um, like that. Honestly, it's, it's been easier than ever before but you still have to put in the work. You can't just, you know, sit on the couch and, and, and drop the weight. You still have to work hard. And here comes Mikey Garcia. Roy Jones told you about his background. His brother, Robert Garcia, is his trainer and has been boxing's trainer of the year in the past. He's one of the better known corner operatives in the sport. His father, Eduardo Garcia, trained Fernando Vargas and brother Robert, both of whom won world titles during their tour of duty in the sport. So he's about as well schooled as any fighter can be, and Roy, one of the most precise counter punchers I think I've ever seen. Yeah, he is that, Jim. And I tell you one, one other thing. He has that element of, su of a surprise. He doesn't look so, so much of a killer or a boxer, but when he hits guys, he puts them in shock. Quiet personality. Says that he's not sure how long he'll stay in boxing, although yesterday in our meeting with him, he did say, okay, I worked really hard to get to where I am. Now is the time to make some money. The question, Max, is how to make big money at 130 or 135 when the stars are all back at 126. Right. I mentioned that Mura beat Salgado in the match. It was, of course, uh, Arginus Mendez. But, you know, guys like Arginus Mendez no, don't at this moment have the kind of names that you can make big money against. I think Garcia has the flexibility to fight in any of the three weight classes you mentioned and go where the money is. Meanwhile, over the years, the tiny island of Puerto Rico has had more than its share of boxing champions. The past couple of years, the list of champs has dwindled to the point where Rocky Martinez is it. The only current title holder in any weight division who hails from Puerto Rico. The passion for boxing in Puerto Rico is something incredible. Any fighter, a good fighter, a regular fighter, the stadiums are always full. The people are always out watching the fights. Everything stops. The culture of boxing in Puerto Rico is very rich. We've had many world champions, like Wilfredo Gomez, Tito Trinidad, Wilfredo Benitez, Hector Macho Camacho, Ivan Calderon, some of the last ones. We've had 60 plus world champions in Puerto Rico. I know that I am the only champion in Puerto Rico at the moment. I feel proud of myself to be a champion, but for me it's a great responsibility. And I know that Puerto Rico is 100% behind me and supporting me. They know that I am 100% prepared for this fight to retain the title this Saturday. So if Mikey Garcia were able to defeat Rocky Martinez, there would be not a single Puerto Rican title holder in boxing. How many years would you have to go back to find that condition? 35, What's 40? amazing is throughout boxing history, there's usually been at least a Puerto Rican champion. And here we have an era with a million belts per division and two million divisions and only one Puerto Rican belt holder. A lot on the line because Rocky Martinez admits that it's a lot of responsibility for him being the only Puerto Rican belt holder at the moment. Very proud boxing tradition in Puerto Rico. It's going to take a hellacious body puncher to beat Mikey Garcia. We'll find out whether Rocky Martinez is willing and ready to be that kind of hellacious body puncher tonight. Roy Jones likes to point out that for a tall fighter, he's very good on the inside. We'll see if that works out. And right now, let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, from American Bank Center, Corpus Christi, Texas, USA, Bob Arum's top rank incorporated, along with PR, Best Promotions, and Foreman Brothers Promotions, they present the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Super Featherweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by Tecate Con Character and Pacquiao versus Rios. Live on HBO Pay-Per-View, Saturday, November 23rd. This bout sanctioned by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulations. Chairman, 
Mike Aris Mendez, Executive Director William H. Kunz, and Supervisor Dick Coles, WBO President Francisco Paco Barcarcel. The three judges scoring the bout at ringside will be David Iabuchi, Levi Martinez, and Oren Schellenberger, and the referee in charge of the action at the bell, Lawrence Cole. And now, the officials are ready, the fighters are ready. So for the thousands in attendance here in Corpus Christi, Texas, and the millions watching around the world on HBO, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Fighting out of the blue corner with head trainer Robert Garcia, wearing purple and official weight, 128, three quarter pounds. His professional record, a perfect one. 32 fights. 32 victories, including 27 knockouts from Moreno Valley, California. Tonight's challenger, the undefeated former featherweight world champion, Miguel Angel, Mikey Garcia. And fighting out of the red corner with trainer Raul Torres. He's wearing blue with red and white and officially weighed in at 129, three quarter pounds. His professional record, 27 victories, including 16 KOs, only one defeat and two bouts even. From Vega, Baja, Puerto Rico, the two-time world champion, former featherweight champion and reigning, defending WBO super featherweight champion of the world, Roman Rocky Martinez. Come on, come on, Rocky. Set her up. Let's go, Rocky. Mikey. All right, gentlemen, I went over the rules over in the dressing room. I want you to obey my commands, protect yourself at all times. Good luck when I swear they play Olympic. Fight clean. Well, Mike Donaire and Darchinian, another fight where on paper looks like it should be all Mikey Garcia. Darchinian and Donaire didn't go according to plan exactly. The trick for Rocky Martinez here is can he flip the Chavez Rosario paradigm, be the Puerto Rican fighter who overwhelms the Mexican, in this case, American fighter, with his activity and busyness. Well, he had a Mexican flag in his corner. So it's Mexican versus Puerto Rico to me. There you go. <laughs> I'm not disputing the mentality of it, just the technicality. You know, just as Vanis Martirosian is seen by many as an Armenian fighter, but he represented the United States in the Olympics. If Mikey Garcia had stuck around in his amateur career long enough to go to the Olympics in 2008, he'd have represented the United States. Exactly. Like Oscar and Tito. 100% correct. Mikey Garcia revealed after the Dallas experience that he was so physically broken down by the effort to make weight that not only did he vomit after leaving the weigh-in, but that night as he sat in his room, he would close his fist and then didn't have the strength to reopen it. He felt so weakened by the experience of trying to get down. So we take it lightly sometimes. You know, well, okay, he was a pound or two over. But these guys are going through excruciating pain sometimes to try to make it down to that weight level. He won every round and scored the knockout under those conditions. Exactly right. Yeah, and people take it lightly that don't know. But people like me that know. Oh, 100%. I know what he went through. That said, people like you always made weight. Of course, but still, I know what he went through. That 
night against Lopez. Even though he knocked Lopez down in the first and knocked him out in the fourth, he mostly threw jabs because it's less of a physical effort to throw a jab than it is to throw a power punch. Normally, he would mix about 40 to 50 percent power punches. He was 80 percent jabs in that fight. Still got the knockout done. Hard to imagine Rocky Martinez winning this fight without pressure. And so far, he has not applied pressure. He's well, standing back and letting Garcia box him. Yeah, and if you look at the size of his arms, when Garcia's the guy moving up in weight, his arms are far bigger than uh, Martinez's arms. Well, Martinez is a long, wiry type, which makes it interesting that he likes to fight inside. He doesn't really have the body type for it. Rocky Martinez told us yesterday that he'll apply, apply the pressure after three or four rounds. He's Question getting is, a what's good look at Garcia in the first round, and he's seen a lot of Garcia's terrific skills. Yeah, what's he going to do between now and the third or fourth round to be in the fight? <laughs> Good jab by Garcia. Strong, precise counter punching. He's had a pretty good go of it here in round one. Good defensive skills on display there as he blocks or parries most of those punches. Time! Relax, relax, be intelligent, okay? Everything went good. Everything went good. Very, good. Very, good. Very nice. Relax. Okay, don't throw yourself in there, right? Avoid the punch and count. All right. Very nice. Very nice. And your defense, you good? And your defense has to be very good. Okay. Relax. Relax. Don't despair. Okay. Relax. Very good. Don't despair. Everything's good. Just use the jab. Time to box numbers in round one. Martinez more active, landing five out of 46. Garcia picking his spots, but effectively landing 11 of 21, more than 50%. By Garcia. That's truly his money punch. Unless a fighter can really move laterally well, Mikey Garcia is a nightmare. You stay on the outside, he can outbox you from long range. If you come at him, that can hasten your demise because he has real counter punching ability and knockout power, as Salito found out. Yeah, he's a tough package in there, you know. It's very hard for a person like Rocky Martinez to figure out what distance to fight him from. Counters with the left hook. Sometimes turns the jab into a left hook. Very strong with the lead hand. Garcia picking up the activity level just slightly now as we go through round two. Rocky Martinez still the busier fighter. Martinez hasn't yet tried to really step inside against Garcia. There he got countered by a left hook. Yeah, but he's keeping the fight on the outside, which I'm very surprised, because he's usually the guy that stalks and fights very close, but he's keeping it outside now. Sign of respect, Roy? Yeah, sign of respect for Mikey Garcia's power, and I think the smartest thing for him to do, because if you're taller than him, you're longer than him, use your reach. Don't go right there where you're going to trade close punches with him because you're going to get knocked out like that. Early in the fight, he told us he doesn't want to be square in front of Mikey, Rocky Martinez. He wants to give him angles and be at greater distance than you might expect. As the fight goes on, if he's still in it. Oh! oh. Down goes Garcia. 
On a perfect counter right hand shot by Rocky Three. Martinez. Five. Nice shot, Six. Garcia. Seven. Second time in his career he's Eight. been down. To me, Walter Estrada also put him on the canvas. Bucks. And that comes as a small shock to Garcia as round two comes to a close. And there is his strategies paying off. It's a 10-8 round. Yep. So the early thunder comes from Rocky Martinez. And now he's trying to follow up and see what Garcia hey. has in the way of leg power. Martinez, this is paying off because Mikey had to jump in to get close to him and got caught with a short right hand that he never expected um, Martinez to throw. Right on the butt with a good counter right What's hand. Up, coach? Quick flash knockdown, nothing that hurt him too bad. Mikey's mom watching coach. at ringside. They both landed nine punches in the second round. Martinez with a 7 3 advantage in power shots and, of course, the counter right hand that you saw perfectly in the replay that knocked Garcia onto his trunks. That was, I think, a result of Rocky Martinez not trying to do too much and took what Mikey gave him, which is usually what Mikey does. And it reminds us that Garcia is moving up in weight and fighting a 130-pound fighter for the first time. Now Martinez looking very assertive here in round number three. Well, we saw Victor Chinian outboxing Nonito Donaire early in that, for most of that fight. And here Rocky Martinez is having real success boxing with Mikey Garcia in the middle of the ring. Who we expect, uh, Martinez to have that advantage because he's the taller fighter. We didn't expect Darchinian to outbox Donaire. But not the reputation as the better boxer. Two judges had Darchinian winning six out of eight rounds against Nonito Donaire. And those two judges, Levi Martinez and Oren Schellenberger, are both scoring this fight as well. Now Mikey Garcia seems to be closing that distance a little bit. I'm impressed with Rocky Martinez's counter shots. Roy short, crisp. Oh, this shot. Hard right, right hand by Martinez. That was long Excuse and crisp. Me, by Garcia. <laughs> to Robert Garcia talking to his brother. Their father is also in the corner. Give me some side to side. Side to side. There you go. Jab. Good, good, good. He's reaching in. Catch him reaching in. 20 seconds. Let's go. Mikey Garcia getting very aggressive here in round three. And you heard Brother Robert saying he's reaching in. Catch him while he's reaching in. That's exactly what Martinez did to Garcia in round number two. Well. Immediately following our show tonight, stay tuned for the premiere of 24-7 Pacquiao Rios, followed by two days with Andre Ward, the su super middleweight champion of the world, who's returning to the ring next week. Andre Ward still unbeaten, hasn't fought in 14 months. Good? Okay. Water, babe. How are you doing? 
Good. Don't bring your health guard down. Defense. Good defense. DC Mike Garcia this time to step in with a jab instead of jumping in and follow with a beautiful right hand because he closed the distance with a step instead of a jump. Compu box numbers in the third round. Martinez was 8 of 59. Garcia, 14 of 32. Mikey Garcia stepping up the use of the jab in the third round. He landed 11 of them. After tasting the canvas for only the second time in his career in round number three. Steve Weisfeld, how do you have it coming to the fourth? Jim, I have it even 28 to 28. Round one, we had the more powerful jabs for Garcia. Round two, 10-8 for Martinez because of the knockdown. Round three, the more effective rights and lefts for Garcia. So after three rounds, I have it even. How large that knockdown looms now. That in these early rounds before Rocky Martinez really gets smoking, which is his plan to start really putting pressure by the third, fourth, fifth round. He's even on the cards, likely, because of his strategy. Yep. Garcia. He keeps trying to get Martinez to lean into one of his left hooks. Oh, good jab by Garcia. I mean by Martinez. Martinez stepped to the left to set up that jab. Right hand by Garcia down the pipe. I'm seeing a little bit more of a wrinkle in Rocky Martinez's game in this fight than I've seen in the past. A little more subtlety in his game. Still getting tagged with big shots by Garcia. But doing a better job than anticipated of avoiding some punches and of staying in the fight. Not falling forward as much as you used to see him do either. Steadier on his feet. I agree with all that. There's a good right hand across the top for Rocky Martinez. Giving as good as he's getting against Mikey Garcia in the early going here in Corpus Christi. Mikey Garcia so some good defense. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine punches, and only one landed clean, which was to the body. Very good defense by Mikey Garcia. Brilliant. Martinez was working, 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 was going to get something in, finally landed that left hook to the body. In case you're just joining us, this is a boxing after dark triple header on HBO from Corpus Christi, Texas. The third of our three fights in the ring now. Earlier, Demetrius Andre got a split decision victory over Bonus Martirosian, which won for Andre to vacant 154-pound title belt. Those were two former United States Olympians 
both of whom had been unbeaten coming into the fight. Then, Victor Chinian built up a scorecard lead through the first eight rounds over a somewhat sluggish Nonito Donaire. But Donaire, searching for the left hook answer, finally found it in the ninth round, rocked Darchinian with power shots, and referee Lawrence Cole stopped it. TKO victory for Donaire. And now, Mikey Garcia has already been on the canvas in the second round. Surprise knockdown by 130-pound champion Rocky Martinez, who's defending his belt in that division, as Garcia, who could no longer make weight in his last fight at 126, has moved up to fight for a world title at 130 in his first trip to the weight class. Garcia in the purple trunks, Martinez in the red, white, and blue. Right hand lands for Garcia. Garcia is doing such a good job of blocking and slipping punches that Martinez is only landing at a rate of about 15 to 20%. But with a perfect right hand counter shot in the second round, he put Garcia on the canvas for only the second time in Mikey's career. And it shocked Mikey. Martinez isn't intimidated by the moment. Went to Scotland to fight Ricky Burns. Last fight was in China. He's been all over the world and fought in guys' hometowns and had some tough fights. He's a veteran, experienced fighter. I do think at some point he's going to have to start pressuring Garcia. This is right around the time he said he would do it. He shows good defense. Martinez. Great defense after that right hand. A good right hand landed too. Good shots by Mikey Garcia. Martinez was a little off balance after throwing a long punch. And Garcia nailed him twice before he could get away. Martinez getting a little bit more aggressive, and that brings Garcia's counterpunching skills more into play. Mikey's wife, Satima, or Fatima, I should say, seated at ringside. They live in Moreno Valley, California, about 70 miles away from Oxnard. Round by round like that. Sometimes he drives to training camp in Oxnard. Sometimes they come to work with him. Just like you do him. But instead of one punch or two punch, come on. Combine them. Put them in together. Like that. Take them like that. Everything's good. Everything's good. The right hand, right? Be relaxed. You're doing good. Don't throw yourself in with that right. Jab and then throw. You got to go in jabbing. Don't go in straight up. We're going good. We're doing good. Water. Happy Box count of power punches through the fifth round. Martinez 21 of 98, landing 21%. Garcia 22 of 60, landing 37%. Garcia had a 16 to 7 edge in punches landed in the fifth round. We come to the sixth of a scheduled 12. See, Mikey trying to counter that jab with a straight right hand. But he seems like he's a little too high to get it, to get it off. The distance at which they fight bespeaks the respect that both have for each other. Logical for Martinez to respect Mikey Garcia's proven punching power. And of course, Garcia has been more respectful of Martinez ever since the second round when he walked into a counter shot. Good left hook by Martinez. 
or excuse me, by Garcia. Tried to follow up with the right hand as well. Martinez has been landing these sneaky, <laughs> quick little counters throughout the fight. Oh, oh, like the left hook that he landed right there. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's not the big looping Martinez shots you're expecting. It's these not trying to do too much punches that are landing. Oh, hey, yeah. Now the left hook lands for Garcia yes. and momentarily wobbled Rocky Martinez. Garcia throws try to do too much punches and they're landing. <laughs> and they're doing a lot. Garcia's got a minute to work with here. He wobbled Martinez with that left hook. Big time. Shots land for Garcia. He keeps hitting it with that lead left hook. There it is again. He blocked that one finally. Oh, there he And is. he gets him with the right hand as he got Martinez to be very left hand conscious and caught him with a quick short right hand oh, shot. Good body shot. Tremendous body shot by Garcia. He's putting on a display of his power punching skills here in the sixth round. Schooled fighter, Mikey Garcia. Guy says, I could take your shot upstairs. Hits him with a hook to the body. Well, Mikey Garcia woke up the crowd in Corpus Christi with some fireworks in round six. Don't do that. Don't do that. You can't do that, Rocky. Listen, you hear me? You can't do that. Don't do that. You got to hold on. You got to clinch. You can't do that, Jose. Don't do that, dude. We're ready to go for a hundred rounds. What's wrong? Don't go back because he catches you. You gotta avoid the porch. Breathe. You good? I'm okay. Breathe. Here you see Garcia try to catch him with the counter right hand over the jab. Missed him, but he followed up with a beautiful left hook because Martinez bagged straight up from the punch. And that one hurt him pretty bad. The second time he finally caught him, with the right hand over the top of the jab. Martinez sticks the jab out, and Garcia with the perfect right hand counter, right on the button. Followed by a little short left to it. Excellent power punching by Garcia in the sixth round. He was 18 of 35 by CompuBox count and totally dominated the round. They go back to boxing to begin round seven. They're chanting Mikey, but it kind of sounds like Rocky. <laughs> Steve Weisfeld, how do you have it halfway through? Jim, I have it 58 to 55, Garcia, in rounds four and five. Certainly, Martinez had his moments offensively and defensively, but Garcia just seemed to do a little bit more. Round six was a clear round for Garcia. So after six rounds, I have Garcia up by three points. That jab right there is causing all kinds of problems for uh, Rocky Martinez. Garcia's jab lands like a straight right hand. It's a thudding jab. It's not a rangefinder jab. Not at he all. uses it to do damage. Strange seeing Rocky Martinez still in the middle of the ring, having some success, as Steve Weisfeld points out here and there. But it doesn't appear to be a winning formula at this point, and usually Rocky's the kind of guy who will sell out to go get a win. Yeah, but he knows that if he sells out here, this kid is throwing mean counter pressures, and he wouldn't last long selling out with Mikey Garcia. Might not last long anyway at this point. Right, right hands have landed for Garcia in this most recent rally. Looking to set up a left hook, lands one there. 27 knockouts and 32 wins coming in for Garcia. That's a tremendously high knockout percentage, exceeded by very few fighters in the sport. Among title holders, Gennady Golovkin is slightly better. Not many. Right hand for Garcia. Mikey and Gennady Golovkin, both boxer punchers in the best sense of the word. Golovkin oh. more aggressive. 
Mikey more tactical. 100% correct. I agree. It all leads to the same result. <laughs> Both of them can crack for their weight classes. Another right hand. Hard shot for, Gar uh, for Garcia. Saturday, it's a fun night for boxing fans here on HBO First. The one-man show, Mike Tyson, Undisputed Truth, directed by Spike Lee, then live boxing with super middleweight champ Andre Ward, still unbeaten, returning to the ring to face undefeated Edwin Rodriguez. You can't go back. You can't go back. Cut on the see, left eyelid. He see Garcia coming over the top of Martinez's jab again with a straight right hand. Followed by a hook and another right hand. In this case, he comes with the jab first and sets up the straight Let's right go. hand. Either way it goes, he's landing the straight right hand go, at go. will. Not a good thing for the opponent. Garcia waited patiently for Martinez's defense to Box. open up just a little bit. And in the last two rounds, he's taken merciless advantage. In the seventh round, Martinez was 2 of 21, totally on the defensive. Garcia landed 20 of 50. In the last two rounds, Garcia has outlanded Martinez 45 to 8. So he has taken over the fight. And for the moment, it appears the question is not if, but when. This is a very impressive performance so far by Mikey Garcia because he's turned a relentless pressure fighter in a heavier weight class into a guy who's given up oh. the ghost of his normal M.O. Good right hand by Martinez. Garcia sets up to trap him again. Hammers him, oh, body shot knocked down with a brilliant left hook to the body. Cole picks up the count, and it's not clear that Martinez will get up. It's a body shot knockout for Mikey Garcia. That is spectacular. Because Ma Rocky Martinez is one of these iron-willed pressure fighters. As I mentioned, in a heavier weight class, Mikey Garcia goes up, dismantles him, knocks him out with a body shot. Rocky Excellent. Martinez with a referee counting 10 over him. And you can see Martinez is still on the canvas, as is often the case when someone lands a left hook to the liver and freezes your legs. Very good body shot at a very opportune time. He landed so many right hands upstairs, Roy, over the course of these last two and a half rounds that he forced Martinez to bring his guard up, and he sneaked this one in under the right elbow. Yes, he did. Beautiful shot right behind the, right, the left elbow, I mean the right elbow. Beautiful level shot. You can't ask for a much better fighter shot. But the straight right over the top had already opened up a cut over Martinez's left eye. So he started trying to defend that. That makes the hands come high. And then, boom, there goes the body shot low. And we were vaguely comparing him because of the knockout percentage to Gennady Golovkin. That knockout matches what Golovkin did to Matthew <laughs> Macklin earlier this year. Which shows you that these guys are very good up and down. They have power in both hands, and they can produce knockouts anywhere at any time. That was a tremendous performance by Garcia. Never lost his composure after being knocked down in the second round. And wife Fatima knows when to celebrate. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the particulars on the knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, referee calls a halt to the bout. The official time, 56 seconds of round number eight. The winner by knockout victory, and he is the new undefeated WBO featherweight champion of the world, Miguel Angel Mikey.
Garcia moves to 33 and 0 with 28 knockouts. And that's Keeping super... pace with Golovkin, who's now 28 and 0 with 25 knockouts. And that's the super featherweight champ, right? That is right. That's super featherweight. Super featherweight, junior lightweight, whatever you want to call it. He's got another title belt. <laughs> Final copy box numbers. Garcia was swamping Martinez in these last three rounds. All three judges, incidentally, had Mikey comfortably ahead in the fight. And you see that he lands at a 38% rate to only 14% for Martinez. Martinez got in the one good right-hand counter shot in the second round, landed some other interesting punches along the way, but by and large, it was only a matter of time as Garcia picked his spots, counterpunched effectively, and ultimately began breaking Martinez down. Those are the power punching numbers showing more of, Mar of Mikey Garcia's dominance. And here's where the punches landed. In the whole course of the fight, Garcia landed only 10 body shots. But the seventh one to land on the right side of the body was the <laughs> end of the story. A knockout victory for Mikey. And now let's go to Max Kellerman with Mikey Garcia. Congratulations, Mikey, on a spectacular knockout win and a title belt in a new division. What were you doing on the deck early in that fight? We're not used to seeing that. I'm not used to that. Uh, just got caught. I was coming in with the 1-2, and he caught me with his right hand as well. And, you know, it just happens in boxing. He caught me around the chin. You got back to the corner, and when Robert said, are you OK, you seemed very calm. Yeah, he caught me. Yeah, he just caught me. Um, even when I was on the ground, I turned back. I winked at him. I mean, I was fine. I wasn't dizzy. He just caught me with a good right hand. Were you surprised that he didn't apply more pressure Really, at any point in the fight, he's the kind of guy who likes his opponents back on the ropes. I think he felt the respect for the power early on, or maybe he was trying to outbox me and just kind of win at the last few seconds of every round. I saw him kind of flurry at the last 10 seconds and try to steal a round. But, um, you know, he just caught me, and he didn't apply pressure after that. I was expecting him to come at me, you know, stronger, but, you know, he had a different game plan. Has it turned out a, a crushing one-punch body shot knockout? Here it is. Tell me, describe it to me. Well, I had him hurt earlier with the right hand on top. And then uh, I saw him, you know, covering up in the, in the head last. So I went for the body shot, and it just kind of right on the, on the liver there. There it is right there. You know, he was hurt. He was pretty hurt from that one. And a little staggered from the punch up in the head as well. Not the kind of guy to allow a referee to count 10 over him and give up his belt. Um, did you think when you hit him it was the end of the fight? I thought it was going to be a very good uh, punch there when I landed it. I knew it was a good shot. And, I don't know if he was going to try to get up. I thought he would, but I could see, you know, his expression that it was very difficult for him to get up. A lot of talk for, for a couple weight divisions now about you and Gamboa. Care to comment? I'm willing to get up and, and, and meet him at 135. If he doesn't want to come down. I think uh, it'll be a good fight. The people want to see it. Uh, they, there's been talk about it, you know, for quite some time. And why not? You know, let's, let's do it. There was a time on your way up where the thought was maybe that fight, but maybe not yet for Mikey. At this point, is everybody a possibility for you? I think anybody, you know, that they want to put in front of me, I'm ready for. They just got to get on the table and negotiate the fight. I'm willing to fight anybody. Congratulations, Mikey. Thank you. I just want to say thanks to everybody who came out and support. Thank you very much. Everybody in Mexico, Michoacan, muchas gracias por todo su apoyo. Jim. All right. Thank you very much, Max. And brilliant victory for Mikey Garcia, who remains undefeated and sets himself up for bigger things down the road. You heard the mention there of the possibility of a fight with Yuri Orcas Gamboa. There are other names which could appear on the expectation list in the next few months as we look down the road to what Garcia is going to do. The end of a Boxing After Dark triple header here in Corpus Christi, Texas. And good to have a thunderous end on that body shot knockdown. And uh, before we leave you, let's look ahead to what's upcoming with Mike Tyson here on HBO. Texas first two unbeaten former American Olympians fought each other for a vacant 154 pound title 
and Demetrius Andrade went down early in the fight against Vanish Martirosian, but for the rest of the fight, it was all Andrade. He dominated on the way to what was a split decision victory, should have been a unanimous decision victory. He's got a title belt. Then, Donair versus Darchinian. Dick Darchinian looking for revenge after Donair knocked him out with a left hook six years ago, and through eight rounds of this fight, Two judges had Donair, had Donair down, Darchinian ahead, but then Donair caught Darchinian with some left hooks, some straight right hands, other power punches in the ninth round, and got a TKO win. And then finally, in the last night of the evening, another surprise knockdown. As in the second round, Mikey Garcia got hit by a right hand counter shot from Rocky Martinez. And then, as the fight went on, Garcia began building the tempo, setting up his power shots mixing left hooks, straight right hands, and eventually that sensational left hook to the body, which left Martinez incapable of getting up and counted out, and now Mikey Garcia has a title belt at 130. Before we leave tonight, check out what's still to come from HBO Boxing in what has already been an epic fall season. Next Saturday night, super middleweight champ Andre Ward takes on Edwin Rodriguez. November 23, live on pay-per-view, Manny Pacquiao versus Brandon Rios from Macau, China. November 30, two light heavyweight title fights, Lineal champ Adonis Stevenson defending his title against Tony Bellew and title holder Sergey Kovalev facing Ismail Salak. For our full schedule plus updates on upcoming fights, visit HBO.com and our Facebook page. And another reminder that immediately following boxing tonight, it's the premiere of 24-7 Pacquiao Rios, followed by two days Andre Ward. Now stick with it and look for this graphic, which will show you how you can contribute to the family of Magomed Abdusalamov as Abdusalamov continues fighting for his life in a New York hospital and the boxing world's vigil for him continues. For all of us here in Texas, I'm Jim Lapley saying good night.